You've seen how SwiftUI lets us store changing data in our structs by using the at state property wrapper. How we can bind that state to the value of a UI control using dollar signs, and how changes to that state automatically cause SwiftUI to reinvoke the body property of our struct. All that combined lets us write code such as this. At state, private var, blur amount, CG float equals zero. Then I put a VStack around our text, add dot blur, radius blur amount, and slider value dollar blur amount in zero through 20. If you run that, you'll find that dragging the slider left and right adjusts the blur amount for the text label, exactly as you'd expect. Now let's say we want that binding to do more than just handle the radius of the blur effect. Perhaps we want to save them to user defaults, run a method, or just print out the value for debugging purposes. You might try updating the property like this. Did set, print, new value is blur amount. If you run that code, you'll be disappointed. As you drag the slider around, you'll see the blur amount change, but you won't see our print statement being triggered. In fact, nothing will be output at all. To understand what's happening here, I want you to think about when we looked at core data. We used the at fetch request property wrapper to query our data. But I also showed you how to use a fetch request struct directly, so we had more control over how it was created. Property wrappers have that name because they wrap our property inside another struct. For many property wrappers, that struct has the same name as the wrapper itself. But with at fetch request, I showed you how we actually wanted to read the wrapped value inside the fetch results, rather than the request itself. What this means is that when we use at state to wrap a string, the actual type of property we end up with is a state string. Similarly, when we use at environment and others, we end up with a struct of type environment that it contains some other value inside it. Previously, I explained that we can't modify properties in our views because they're structs and are therefore fixed. However, now you know that at state itself produces a struct, so we have a conundrum. How come that struct can be modified? Xcode has a really helpful command called open quickly, accessed using command shift O, which lets you find any file or type in your project or any of the frameworks you've imported. Activate it now and type state. Hopefully the first result says Swift UI below it, but if not, please find that and select it. You'll be taken to a generated interface for Swift UI, which is essentially all the parts that Swift UI exposes to us. There's no implementation code in there, just lots of definitions for protocols, structs, modifiers, and such. We are to see state, so you should have been taken to this line of code right here. This property wrapper attribute is what makes this whole thing into at state for us to use. Now look a few lines further down, and you'll see this public var wrap value, value get, non-mutating, set. That wrap value is the actual value we're trying to store, such as a string. What this generated interface is telling us is a property can be read, get, and written, set. But that when we set the value, it won't actually change the struct itself. Behind the scenes, it sends a value off to Swift UI for storage in a place where it can be modified freely. So it's true the struct itself never changes. Now we know all that, Let's circle back to our broken code. On the surface, that states, when blur amount changes, print out its new value. However, because at state actually wraps its contents, what it's actually saying is that when the state struct that wraps blur amount changes, print out the new blur amount. Now let's go a stage further. You've just seen how the state struct wraps its value using a non-mutating setter, which means neither blur amount all the state struct wrapping it are changing. Our binding is directly changing the internally stored value, which means the property observer is never being triggered. How then can we solve this? How can we attach some functionality to a wrapped property? For that, we need custom bindings. Let's look at that next. 